Welcome to the first of 13 SPSS video tutorials accompanying the first edition of the text Introduction to Statistics for Social Sciences. Although SPSS is not integrated into the textbook, each video tutorial will cover how to use SPSS to run many of the analytical techniques discussed in each chapter. In these tutorials, we will be using version 19 of IBM SPSS statistics. If you are running a different version, you may notice some slight differences, but in most cases, you should be able to match the actions in the video to your version of the software. In this first tutorial, we will create a data set. The data set that we will create is the same as the data set that we will use in the Chapter 2 tutorial. Once you have finished this tutorial, you will have a data set that looks like this. As you can see, we have three variables, gender, age, and a short name for the variable number of text messages sent. In this data set, we have 18 respondents, one respondent per row. You can also see that we have coding representing the gender and age variables, and each participant's stated number of text messages sent. Now to create our data set, we first open a new data editor window by going to File, New, Data. This provides us with a blank data editor. In later tutorials, we will cover how to use many of the toolbars shown on this screen. But for now, we are going to focus on the two tabs shown at the bottom of the data editor labeled Data View and Variable View. The Data View tab is used to input your data, whereas the Variable View tab is used to define the variables we wish to work with. We want to have the three variables gender, age, and number of text messages sent. To create these variables, we start by clicking on the Variable View tab. In this view, the first two columns that we will look at are titled Name and Label. In the name command, we enter a short name for each variable. For gender and age, we can simply enter gender and age. But for the number of text messages sent, we need a shorter name. So we could use something like TXTMSG, or if you want to separate the words more, T x t underscore m s g. In the label column, we can enter a longer version of a variable's name, such as text messages sent. Entering a label is not required. However, it is quite helpful for when you are reading the analysis output, as it will show the label for each variable rather than its short name. Now let's go to the Data View tab to enter our data. As you can see, the headers for each column in the Data View are the same as the short name that we entered in the Name column of the Variable View. Now, when we input our data, we need to enter the appropriate codes that we have created for the specific categories within a variable. In this data set, for the gender variable, we will code females as 1 and males as 2. For the variable age, we will have three categories. The first category, numbered 1, will represent those between the ages of 16 and 19. The second category, numbered 2, will represent those between 20 and 23. And the third category, numbered 3, will represent those between the ages of 24 and 27. Now starting with our first respondent, we can enter the data. The first respondent was a female between the ages of 20 and 23 who had sent 13 text messages. So we will enter a 1 for gender, a 2 for age, and a 13 for number of text messages sent. Our second respondent was also female, but between the ages of 16 and 19 and sent 21 messages. So we will enter a 1 for gender, a 1 for age, and a 21 for the number of text messages sent. Now pause this video and enter the remaining data as shown here. When you are done, we will go back to the Variable View tab to look at some additional settings. 
Now that you have entered in the data for the 18 participants, we want to go back to the Variable View tab to look at the other columns in their settings. Next to the Name column is the column type. By clicking on the cell, a menu will pop up allowing you to change the type of the variable. For example, if we were treating the gender variable as a string, meaning we would be entering the word male rather than the number 2, this is where we would change that setting from numeric to string. Beside the type column is the width column. This sets the width of the characters allowed in your data. Usually, unless you have a lot of digits or letters in a variable, you can just leave this as is. Beside the width column is the setting for the number of decimals. The default is usually two decimals, but you can increase or decrease those here. After the label column is the values column. If you have a lot of coding for the categories in your data, such as one for females and two for males, you can enter those codes here. While it's not necessary to do, it does make reading the output much easier as the program will replace the codes with the values when we use them as headings in, say, a chart or a graph. Since our data included codes for the variable gender and age, we'll go ahead and enter those here. By selecting the value cell that corresponds with the variable gender, the values label window will appear. For the first value, we will assign the code 1 with the label female. and the code 2 with the label male. Next we will enter the labels for the variable age. This time we will assign the code 1 with a label of 16 to 19, the code 2 with a label 20 to 23, and the code 3 with the label 24 to 27. At this point, we will skip the missing column and go to the columns column. In this setting, you can adjust the width of the columns in the data view. Now the last setting that we will cover here is the measure column. By clicking on the cell, you can see that we can tell the software about the measurement properties of our variables. That is, we can say whether the variable is nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio. In SPSS, interval and ratio levels of measurement are grouped under the heading labeled scale. Setting these for each variable is not necessary. However, when you look at some of the analysis screens, which we will do in future tutorials, you will see that these symbols are sometimes helpful in remembering whether your data is categorical or continuous. For our variables, gender is nominal, age is ordinal, and number of text messages sent is a ratio level variable, which in SPSS is referred to as scale. Now that we have set up our data set and entered our data, the last thing we will cover is how to save the data set. To save your data, go to File, Save As, select where you want to save the data, and then name your file. You will notice that your file will include the extension .sav. This is the file extension for SPSS data files. Now you have created a data set and have completed the first SPSS video tutorial. In the next tutorial, we will look at how to use SPSS to conduct some of the analysis discussed in Chapter 2 of the textbook.